Hi everybody and welcome to this uh, program, uh, our soon to be our soon to be named program, where yes. we talk about the discographies of some of our favorite bands in rock and roll, heavy metal, hard rock, you know, punk rock, you name it. If it's rock of any kind, we talk about it. Um, so what we're gonna do is this first series of shows is gonna be about the one, the only, the Prince of Fucking Darkness. Ozzy uh, Osbourne. Yes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to break his discography up in twos. And this show, the very first show, the very first, the inaugural episode, we're going to talk about his first two records, the only two records, the only two studio records, to feature Mr. Randy Rhodes. <laughs> the Randy guitar. Rhodes years. Luckily, the Ozzy discography is very, like, separated by twos. Yeah. So this works out. Until Zach Wilde comes in. Then no, it's, like, no, separated by, like, sixes. No, no, no. no oh, oh, oh yeah. you mean the entire. I thought you yeah. meant, like, based on the guitarist. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So today we're going to be discussing Diary of a Madman and Blizzard of Oz, respectively, uh, and let y'all know what we think yes. and how we rank them among the two. As we progress, the rankings will change. So once we get to the next two, we're going to rank the four mm -hmm. rather than just the two, and then we'll just determine by the end of this with how we rank all ten of Ozzy's. Yes. Solo studio record. And also, I know we are not doing, I know it's listed on Wikipedia, we are not doing, for future episodes too, we're not doing, for instance, for Ozzy, we're not doing Undercover. Yeah. It's a cover record. If it's an album that has a cover song, it's fine, but if it's an entirely cover based album, we're not doing it. Yeah. For no, any artist. Yeah. How, unless. Especially Metallica's Lulu. The only. <laughs> well, that's not a cover record. I that's know, just, but. That's just a record that should have been covered and never released to the public. Um, the only exception would be if we decide to do, like, a, like, if a band has multiple live albums, we might do live albums. Uh, if we decide to, I guess, rank our top, like, maybe, like, our top five favorite cover albums, maybe, but I don't really have too many of those, so I, yeah. you won't see cover albums on here. Yeah. Uh, maybe a list of our favorite cover songs, but not... You will you you will not get a, a cover album list. Enough of the the housekeeping. Let's just jump into Blizzard of Oz. Yes, Ozzy's we'll start... very first solo album. Uh, so Blizzard of Oz was released on September twentieth, nineteen eighty. Uh, the producers were Ozzy Osbourne, basically the the band. There was no producer except for just them. Yeah. Uh, you had, uh, obviously when I do the lineups, Ozzy's the singer. I'm not. Uh, I'm yeah. not even gonna list them. So guitar, we had Randy Rhodes. Bass, Bob Daisley, and drums, Lee Kerslake, and keyboards, Don Airy. Don Airy, yeah. Yes. So, what are your thoughts on this album? Well, a lot of times when I do listen to Blizzard, I kind of think about where Ozzy was at the time, you know, coming off Black Sabbath, mm -hmm. you know, he's just, he just got kicked out of Black Sabbath, you know, a lot of the, I feel like a lot of the songs kind of delve into, like, I don't know, it's like a dead giveaway that it's about yeah. him leaving Black Sabbath yes. and starting off. Um, Crazy so you, Train is about his uh, insane lifestyle. Yeah, um, and you can oh, like and Good Better Romance. Romance is uh, is about Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, like you can really tell that leaving Black Sabbath was like one of the hardest things in his life, mm -hmm. and you could definitely feel that in this record. Um, it's it is one of my favorite records. It's a record, and with Diary coming up, these are two records that I can listen to anytime. Uh, I can I can I can listen to it completely in order, you know. But I don't mind picking songs from time to time. But mostly I listen to it in order. Um, I think the musicianship on this is second to none. Uh, Bob Daisley being like one of the most underrated bassists, so solely on his Ozzy work. I know he's done other stuff, yeah. but like solely on his Ozzy work, I think he's I think he's underrated. Especially. That like it's, it's like a simple bass line. It's like you have Crazy Train where it's like boom, boom, boom. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Like that doesn't follow the guitar, but it, 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 it it's treated as a bass rhythm. It's not like let's just copy the guitar. Yeah. Um, yes. And and you know like you know because I I've told Wade several times like if you could pick put together your favorite your best Aussie lineup based on whoever would would you know whoever was ever in the band he's always the one I pick the bass player I always pick. Yeah. Um. To me, this album changed my life. I would not be playing guitar without this album. Before this album, I was listening to Limp Biscuit and Kid Rock. <clears throat> you know. <laughs> Made a man out of him. Yeah, so I listened to Blizzard and it blew my mind. Just like, you could do this with guitar. And at, like, Mr. Crowley, I was like, I want to play guitar. That's what I want to do. And I, since then, I was 13, and then I picked up guitar and I've been playing for the rest of my life, pretty yeah. much. And it's because of this album and Randy Rhodes and just like, 
he is just so, as a guitarist, he's classically trained, so he has these classical elements that he's thrown in there. Same way with Metallica, they had Cliff Burton. He kind of threw these classical things with them. Yeah. So you have Randy Rhodes, who is great. Lee Curse, like, you know, he's not talked about a lot, but you know what? He's a, he had good drumming skills. He's not the best Ozzy drummer. No. We'll get to him later. We all know who it is. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but... Yeah, like he, like, like he's not Bill Ward, but for what he did, was still pretty good. And this is different from Black Sabbath. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that I take away from. Like, if you listen, especially not just Black Sabbath as a whole, but if you listen to the last Ozzy Sabbath record, which I believe 13. was no, 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 oh, never say one, never at say that no. at that point. No, I think Technical Ecstasy was after that. I think it was Never Say Die. Never say. Either one, because they're, they're both very similar albums, in my in my opinion. But you listen to where Black Sabbath was when Ozzy left, and then you look at what Ozzy wanted to do and what he ended up doing with the solo record, and you see like the wide variety of things that he clearly wanted to do, and he had the right people to make it work. And there's just you know, there, it's I mean, it's night and day. I mean, I, I as much as I love Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath with Ozzy for those last two records mm. could not fucking touch yes. what Ozzy was doing with these, it's interesting with, with, with Blizzard. Because Black, uh, Black Sabbath later did Heaven to Heaven Hell stuff and Mob Rules and you're like, but they, after those albums, I feel like that both bands learned like, let's not do technical ecstasy. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so we have this idea where we're going to do three things. We do our favorite song or songs, right. uh, least favorite song, and underrated song that people do not talk about but they should. Okay. So favorite song, we'll do just we'll do favorite songs and then we'll do that. So my favorite song on here, uh, well they're all classics. Yeah. The majority of them are classics, but I really want to highlight Mr. Crowley. It, it, I feel like with the lineup, it it like the entire lineup with the keyboard player was really emphasized in this song, and it also has two great guitar solos. You think, okay, the first guitar solo is awesome. They're not going to top it. And then they have a little melody to it. And then he just goes ripping again. And it fades yeah, yeah. out. And I love that. So Mr. Crow is probably my favorite song. Yeah. Uh, for me, I Don't Know is my favorite yeah, song on the album. Uh, mostly because I love I love the intro. It's a great way to start the record. You know, it really gives that epic feel. That, that first riff kicks in and it just takes over. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, you know, especially like the first time I ever heard it, you know, who can't feel that? Who can't relate to that? Like, it was one of those songs where, like, I was digging the music, but then I was listening to the, what Ozzy was, was saying, and it, it hit me in all those right spots, you know what I mean? It made, yes. me, it made <sighs> me realize that, like, hey, you know, not, no, not everybody knows what, they, what they're doing, not everybody knows where they're going, but as long as, you know, you can at least, you know, accept it and learn and, you know, try, try. as long as you try, you know, you're not failing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when I and hearing that when I did, you know that really that meant a, meant a lot to me. And the song is just so good. Like I said, especially when you get to like the solos near the end, the solo near the end, and just <sighs> just you know like the like that little like break in the middle where it's like you know it's kind of soft. Yeah. Also, on a shout out uh, on the re-release. There is you looking at me, looking at you. Yeah, I which I, I feel like that album, sh that this song should be on the album. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that, cut our least favorite song. If that if that song wasn't on the rec was on the regular record, that'd be my favorite. Yeah. That'd be my favorite. That song is so good. Guitar solos and that. Are so that was a, yeah. That was a song. I don't know why they cut it. The only reason I can think of is like it probably just couldn't fit on a twelve inch vinyl. And if that's the case, I understand. But you could have put out an EP, or you could have cut our least favorite songs. Uh, I know, you go first, I think I know what your least favorite song is. Do you? I think it's No, Mo no Bone Movies. <sighs> See, this is a hard one. I, I think really it's like No Bone album. Movies. No, they're all great, but I feel like No yeah. Bone Movies is like, a, from going from the high, and there's Mr. Crowley, and then you go to No Bone Movies, and you're like... <sighs> Honestly, this is going to surprise you. And keep in mind, this does not mean I dislike the song at all. Wait. Is it what I think it is? It's Suicide Solution. That was my least favorite song because I'm going to say it now. I, it's not because it's about suicide. That doesn't offend me. It's more of, I just don't think it's the great... Like It's always on his like like his greatest hits, his live records. I'm like, I don't think it's a great song. I mean, I think it's on the live records because I think he, they just like doing it. It's just... Um, the thing I don't like about it is it's not even so much the suicide anti because it's it is technically an anti-suicide yes. song, but my problem with that is 
Ozzy doesn't understand that, because the whole message of the song is, don't kill yourself, have alcohol. Which, as we all know, alcohol with plus it's, suicidal it's, thoughts it's, it's a equals suicide. Uh, so, um, and also, so also, that, and honestly, it, 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 like I said, I do like the song, but I do feel like if you took it out and replaced it with you looking at me, looking at you, yes. it would have been a much better record. Also, I think because... As great as it is. Because also you got, like, it's sandwiched between, not count D, uh, sandwiched between Crazy, I don't know, Crazy Train, Good Men Romance, and on the other side is Mr. Crowley. And you're just, yeah. like, quality-wise, I feel like, but uh, since you said Suicide Solution, to me, Nobo movies could have been replaced. Yeah. Uh, um, an it's honorable cool song. An though. honorable mention would be D. Because it doesn't actually fit with anything, and it's oh, it's, it's, it's less than a minute. It, it, but it's not even a minute long. Like that could have either been part of a song, another song, or just completely stricken. From but the it's record. it was. I feel like Randy, that was Randy Rhodes. Like I want to do this. Well, no, I'm fine with that. But what I'm saying is like maybe put it, make it the intro to Suicide Solution. Like maybe you know, like how Black Sabbath would like they have a, a track that was multiple songs, just do like D slash Suicide Solution. Yeah, uh, um, that would have been weird. It would have been weird, but I mean, uh, it does blend. Underrated song for me is Revelation, Mother Earth. Um, that song is... You know, you know he loved the Beatles on that one. If if I'm allowed to cheat, I'm going to say Revelation, Mother Earth. No, and, the same one. And, no, no, no. And Steal Away the Night. Yes, that's if, a great if song. I, if, if cheating is not allowed, I'm going to say Steal Away the Night. But because if you listen to Revelation, Mother Earth, and Steal Away the Night side by side... They're one song. Yeah. They really are one song. Um, so but good. if I have to pick one be between the two, I'm going to go with Seal Away the Night because it is so nobody good. talks about it, but it has a great groove, great hook. It's great closer. It's just, you, it's, it's just, it's, it's 80s metal at its finest. Like, you just can't help but get hyped up in it. You just can't help but get into it. And I think, I, I definitely would say it's okay. the underrated, most underrated song. If it wasn't for I Don't Know, that would have been my favorite okay, song. Okay, so let's go to Diary. Diary no. of a Madman. Uh, so, the year was November 7th, 1981. The producer is Max Norman, Ozzy and Randy Rhodes. Yeah. The lineup is the same lineup, Randy Rhodes, Bob Daisley, Kerslick, but there's a little detail. Daisley and Kerslick were, were not credited, but were later replaced with Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge. Yeah. So, I guess they wrote the song, but they weren't recorded. Or or yeah. or they were just credited. Be, they just were credited because they were in the band at the time. Yes. Yeah, so because Rudy Sarzo, to the best of my knowledge, has never appeared on a uh, Ozzy yes. studio record. Yes, that was pretty much only live. I think feel like there was a fallout with Bob Daisley a little bit. Bob Daisley keeps falling out of this. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he just didn't want to tour or whatever. So I think it was uh, shared. But, but, but Randy was like, "Oh, I know Rudy from Quiet Riot." That's but Rudy Sarzo in there. Yeah, I, I think it was. I think it was Sharon. Uh, so this because <laughs> that's that's the story you always hear. This album is it's not a classic album. I mean, come on. I don't think it's as strong as Blizzard, but this is a very like it's all about your taste. I you know really I really love this album yeah. because I felt like Ozzy experimented more and really put a lot more of himself. Like I feel like Blizzard was you know a proving ground where. Diary is Ozzy like I know I'm good. Yeah, you know it was like it's, 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 Diary. It was like it's like Blizzard is you know lacking confidence. Still great, but Ozzy lacking confidence. This is Ozzy with all the confidence in the world to just you know just go forward and just do do his thing. It's also the last record with Randy Rose. Yes, let sadly uh, you know tragedy hit that. Um, yeah, so it was uh, also less than the. the what was it? The 22 uh, bonus release track was I Don't Know Live, so there's no, no track. Yeah. Yet. Um, this, this album to me has so many classic songs. Yeah. There's some songs I don't really love, but they're all classic to me. You know, I don't love Flying High Again, but it's a classic. I understand yeah. why it's on the radio. I, I'm just sorry, like, after Over the Mountain, you're just... I, yeah, Over, I, the, I, Mount, Over I, the Mountain <laughs> is just a killer track. Um, so... I guess since we there's not much backstory to this. Uh, yeah, there's not. Favorite, it's, what's your favorite track on here? Um, my favorite track on here would probably have to be "Over the Mountain." Okay. You can't you can't understate what yes. "Over the Mountain" does as far as an intro yes. song. 
Um, the, the, the rhythm is really good. It, it almost, I know this is going to sound weird, but it almost feels like the closest Ozzy ever came to doing a thrash song when you listen to it. And, and, the, and, any, and in 81, you know, like that's still amazing. Just, it's so heavy. It's just, it, it just fucking like just gallops. Yeah. It just, it's just keeps it going. It you over that mountain. Yeah. It's like you're, it really does feel like, you know, you're, you're taking a trip, you know, to like some just metal wonderland or something and i just think that song just kicks so much ass i love this album i love all the tracks after it maybe put over the mountain in the middle i would have said you know oh, for the sake for the sake of the other tracks but over the mountain had oh, to be the opener great, that's a great opener it, it, it had to be the uh opener. mine is dire the, the title track dire madman it's an epic thing like ozzy's yeah lyrics because Ozzy sometimes I, I love Ozzy but sometimes his lyrics are a little cheesy yeah that's kind of what I like about him but this uh, I felt these lyrics are probably the best lyrics he's written like where like after like the interlude where he changes like how he sings a little bit before like the the instrumental part yeah <clears throat> like that part gives me goosebumps a lot and yeah. also the guitar work is great just the guitar, the, the haunting, like, yeah. and the interlude, the, the, the haunting, the boom, damn, boom, damn, before Ozzy does that thing I was talking about. Yeah. Um, so haunting, and at the end you have the choir with it. Yeah. And the whole, and, and, the, and the horns, the, uh, uh, the string instruments, you know, it's a, an epic. It's a good way to, cl it's the best closing out a song in any record I've ever listened to, I think. Yeah. <laughs> also, honorable mention to uh, You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. Uh, that's like my second favorite track on the album. Really? But <clears throat> okay, so I don't know. I just like the groove of it. Least favorite song. Least favorite. Mine would be tonight. Uh, my least little favorite... dolls is also a close second, but I, I think I know you hate little dolls. <clears throat> no, I'm slowly liking little dolls, but I just don't. It's think that it's... drum. The drums grew the highlight, but everything else is just kind of like uh, flying high again would probably be my yeah. least favorite. Um, it's not a bad song. Not one song on this album is bad. Um, but I my my issue with flying high again. Is like something about it feels like Ozzy wasn't trying as much as he was with the other songs as far as the writing goes. But like it is also amazing that as little as it sounds like he's trying, <clears throat> it's still better than what a lot of people sound like when they are trying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Flying High again is my least favorite. Okay, track. so underrated track to me is uh, Sato or S A T O. To me. This is my one of my favorite Randy Rhodes songs. Yeah. I feel like Randy Rhodes really freaking goes crazy on this one. It has a cool groove to it. It has kind of like... <clears throat> it just has... I'll talk about this on the Bark of the Moon, because there's a similar song on Bark of the Moon. It gives me... It's like... it's like I feel like they'd be perfect together. Yeah. Um, but you'll find out next episode on that one. Uh, Sado is just so good. Uh, I think it's sailing off the shore or something like that. Uh, sailing across the ocean, yeah. or um, a lot it. of people sailing say it's supposed ocean. to be like Sharon something. I forget the Sharon Arden, and like because it's like the woman that uh, the guy that Sharon was with, and then the woman that Ozzy was with because the O was supposed to stand for Ozzy, something like that. I don't know the truth. I prefer it to be stand for sail across the ocean because that is actually said in the song. <laughs> yeah. And it's just such a it's such a great song. It what, is really good. What's your under? What do you think is an underrated jam? Um, to tell us about. Because I don't I don't want to I don't. You can't choose the same one I do. I I'm well I'm at not really well underrated. I'm 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 at a hang up between two. It was S A T O. So since you said S A T O, I'm gonna lean towards tonight. Um, I just don't like tonight. I like it. I think it's, it's such a really good ballad. Um, something that Ozzy is like low key like slept on when it comes to his. His, his recording like a lot of people like either don't acknowledge or they shit on his ballads and don't, I really like when dare. I was don't shit on Dreamer oh I know people who have shit on Dreamer and oh I don't get my it. god we'll get into but that but I oh. really I really enjoy Ozzy's like ballads the thing I like about Ozzy's ballads more so than his other song is you see a lot of his childlike innocence you hear a lot of his childlike innocence in them because Ozzy is essentially a man child Let's be real. He has smiley faces you know, tattooed on his... We're, we're not going to sit here and say that Ozzy's this, like, mature genius or anything. But, like, he is a man-child. And I think with his ballads, you get that, like, raw, like, primal, like, feeling of what love is yes. and what he wants out of it. 
and I think tonight is a great example. Goodbye to Romance is good, but I think Goodbye to Romance, I think because of like it has a better guitar the keyboard, it does have a better guitar solo. But I think with the keyboards, it kind of really, it kind of like not takes it away, but I think like it doesn't have that level of like heavier ballad, whereas tonight has that heavier ballad feel, um, which is uh, honestly I think why it's not talked about because I think maybe it blends a little too much with his other songs. All right, so ranking. This is going to be tough. Not I don't, for me. Not I don't for think, me. I don't think we should... Should we rank right now? Or yes, we we're going to we're gonna rank... we the next step? No, we're going to rank okay. what we have. Well, me, it's Blizzard number one and Diary number two. Diary number one, Blizzard oh, God, number two. Our, our list is going to be totally different. I, I, love, I love Blizzard, but there's something about Diary, just the way he was going... That and the, and the thing is, you can easily say like, "Oh, you didn't like Flying High again," but it, I didn't it, like, but I didn't like Suicide Solution, and I like them both, e both those songs equally on their respective albums. So for me, it's not really taking. They're both classics. They're both oh, absolutely! Like literally choosing is like saying like, like Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets. Ride like, the just, Lightning. Yeah, it's, I'm, 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 <laughs> we'll get the Metallica. And maybe I'll follow the same one. Right. Anyway, well, uh, we just spoiled that episode. Maybe. Uh, so let us know in the comment section below what other artists we should do in the future yeah. after the Ozzy one, of course. Yeah, and let us know how you feel about uh, Diary of a Madman and Blizzard of Oz. Let us know how you rank them. Yes. And, you know, of course, you know, tell us that we're wrong and we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, right here on Mint Condition Productions' YouTube page, click the subscribe button. Click the little bell so you can get notifications every time a new program is uploaded. Yes. Until the next show, I'm Scott Savage. And I'm Swade Bain. And we will... Catch you later. Good night, Cleveland!